I didn't mm -hmm. even do this last week. I think I was sleeping at the time. We got in at what five? Uh, three in one week. Obviously, uh, goes without saying it should have been a, a four and zero week, uh, and that's the competitor inside of you. Uh, love this team. Love this group. Uh, never out to fight for sure. And uh, they're just a tough-minded group. And I thought this in the fall. I thought we would win gritty. I didn't think there would be a lot of pretty wins. Uh, which I don't know that we've had one. Uh, maybe McNeese. I don't know. Uh, but there's not a whole lot of pretty to us, but it is a lot of grit. And uh, we just keep playing. A lot of passion, right? And just keep playing. And uh, yesterday kind of proved that out. And, and those boys, our guys deserved yesterday because uh, we haven't gotten a lot of breaks. And uh, now some of that's self-imposed, obviously, uh, but haven't gotten a lot of breaks. And, uh, you know, Augie used to say you, you make your own breaks. You know, the harder you work, the luckier you get and all that stuff. But still, this can be a cruel game at times, uh, you know, evidenced by Margot getting jammed uh, there in the ninth on Saturday with two outs uh, and us still having the lead and then hits that new turf and spins back and it's kind of no man's land. And then for us to get the winning run to third with no outs and leave them there and then have to start all over again. Uh, and that led into yesterday and everybody saw how that unfolded. And so, any you know, you, we've got a, a, a puncher's chance every night and, and because of our pitching and they're going to hold it close and – I had told Gunner, I thought, because uh, we were scattering hits, we were getting hits, and uh, they were doing a good job of, of stranding runners. If, if somehow we could just reach, uh, I thought we'd get a big hit late. And we just had the right guy come to the plate. So uh, that's in the rearview mirror. Gonna gonna get on the bus tomorrow at 2, drive up to Ruston and, and have a good practice uh, and face a really good law tech team uh, on Wednesday. Six o'clock. I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. It is supposed to be eighty degrees, uh, you know. And then and I say that to preface this because Jonesboro is a wild card, right? Uh, then it's supposed to be pretty mild weather for this time of year, seventies, uh, sixties, uh, uh, which is is obviously good. So uh, we're looking forward to getting on the road. Uh, it always brings the team a little tighter. Uh, I feel like we've played good on the road so far, and uh, I would expect that to continue. What obvious? It's pretty obvious that you have more talent in your pitching staff this year, but that freebies issue that was a big problem last year kind of crept in a little bit. So what what what, what is the key to getting that exterminated pretty quick? I think you just got to weather the storm, Kev. It's uh, it's not for lack of work. Uh, you know, for as young as he is, Gunner's going to be an elite, elite uh, pitching coach and uh, head coach one day if if that's, you know, where his sights are set, which I'm sure it is. He's an alpha personality uh, that demands a lot. And, uh, you know, those pitchers are, are, are working their best. And a lot of t it can't be, you know, there's the hardest thing to do in sports is hit that little white ball on a tee, right? Second hardest thing to do is, is hit a 90-mile-an-hour fastball move. And, well, to me, the third hardest thing to do is – throw big pitches on command and uh, with stuff. And we've got the stuff and, and uh, you know, we've hit a little bump in the road where it can get a little contagious. And uh, I think it just takes one guy. And I think you saw that out of Blake McGee. He kind of turned that trend around and then it gets contagious in the other way. And uh, there is some, some volatility there, but I'm not alarmed by it. Uh, not right now. With McGee, is it just about him getting in a, in a routine and getting some innings under him was the difference between maybe when he didn't pitch effectively, but now that he did. Yeah, I think you're exactly right on that. Uh, the last part of that statement you just made is I think it's shaking some of that rust off. You got to remember he pitched probably up until this point last year, maybe a little deeper. Uh, and then we didn't see him again until literally uh, spring training and of this year. Uh, so, I think what we've seen unfold, Kevin, is the more he goes out there, the better he gets and uh, the longer he can stay out there. I think the question that's going to pop up at some point is where are you going to use him? And uh, 
I think he's going to he's going to continue to excel wherever we use him, but I also think he's going to apply some heat to 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 some guys. Coach, can you talk a little about the conversation you had with Coach Ullman after uh, yesterday's game? I got a lot of respect for Jay. Just uh, thanking those guys for coming over, and that's that. With uh, with those two, with those gritty wins that you guys have had, how beneficial is it to kind of have the momentum that you guys are on and everything like that heading into conference play? It's big. That can't be. That's a great question. It, it, confidence is everything, and uh, in a hand eye sport, it's everything. And uh, that, that goes for just name the sport, darts, pool, it doesn't matter. Anytime it's hand-eye related, the mind is involved a lot. And uh, that's the number one thing that you coach is, is the mind. You make sure they're physically, you know, in great shape. But mentally, uh, you know, you're, you're, you draw off of past success in this game. And, uh, you know, the more opportunities you get to have days like yesterday and, and – actually get it done, it's it's a huge shot in the arm, uh, especially heading into what I call a new season. And if you watched us yesterday, that was why the meeting was so long. It wasn't about Tulane. It was about this upcoming week. And, uh, you know, it's a it's a 10-week war out there, battle, whatever you want to call it, metaphorically. And and this is a, a, a nasty league that it's, it's personal on many fronts uh, for every team. They all play with a tremendous amount of energy. And if you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile, and uh, they're not going to feel bad about it. And so it's 30 individual battles, and, and you've got to be ready to roll. But it is, to answer that question, it's a new season. Okay, so for our struggles this season so far, which, I, you know, in a weird way, I'm thankful for a lot of them because we're going to become better through this. And I think you're seeing that unfold because Tulane's got a really good team. They are much improved and uh, obviously look like a regional type team, as does U of H. And uh, so what I was telling our team is the U of H game, the Tulane series, that is very comparable to an upper echelon team in our league, that type series. And, uh, you know, we've got a chance to begin anew starting Friday night. Obviously, there's a lot of tech in between that, which is a big opportunity for us on the road because they're good uh, and have a great coach and coaching staff. Uh, so, yeah, we're excited about starting a league. Uh, there's a lot of expectation, obviously. We've been very blessed and, and uh, had a great run in leagues, you know, through throughout uh, my career and obviously throughout the history of this program, doing very well in the league. Are we at the point where uh, Murphy or can go more innings, or where are you in, in that midweek starter? I think so. I think we're to the point with Murph. And look, Tuesday will, will bear out a little bit more, right? Uh, I don't know how long I'll stay with – or not Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't know how long I'll stay with him because I think we're at the point with Murph where I may need to pull him into the weekend. Uh out that pen if some of this volatility continues. I don't know that Murph has walked anybody. I don't think he has. Now, I know he hit a kid and uh, in the shin, and then they jump ship on him next pitch. But I think that's his only freebie. It's a good mix. There's a split involved. There's a there's a downer breaking ball, and it's a good enough fastball with command. If you can command a fastball at 89, you can pitch. What question – because it how – I know you probably wish you didn't have any question position lines right now, but did you get enough of them answered, or which ones are you still? We're banged up, Kevin. We're banged up. I mean, I got arguably, you know, one of our biggest game changers in Mandino. I think what you're seeing him is not some one-off deal. I think it's it's pretty real uh, because I know his mindset, and he can run, and he's strong. It reminds me of Johnny Damon. If you watch him run and just kind of the way he goes about it, he reminds me of a young Johnny Damon. Uh, he's going to be a really good player, uh, but he's in this concussion protocol, right? So there's no promises with that. That I've seen it last a week. I've seen it last eight weeks. It just depends. And, uh, you know, Higgs, unfortunately, they're both trying to make a play. The ball means a lot to our players. And because I watched our guys make that play in practice when nobody's here. And uh, I watch – 
uh, halter dive into the stands over the brick wall and practice. Nobody was here. Just the ball means a lot to our kids. And Higgs is trying to make a play. Mandino is trying to make a play. Well, Higgs' forearm hits Mandino in the head. I'm praying, literally praying as I'm running out there. If anybody saw it, it looked it looked tragic. And, uh, and unfortunately, I've been a part of a scene like that before. Uh, but he's okay. Thank God. He just has a concussion, and I don't know on Higgs' forearm. That's why Higgs, if you watch him, he was having a good day. As the game goes on, the adrenaline wears off. He can't feel his arm. Well, he winds up punching out with a winning run of third. He can't feel his arm. That's why he didn't play yesterday. pastor has got a shoulder, okay? So some, some days he can throw, some days – so there's just some things behind the the scene sometimes that it's, it's, it's tough. And then when you've – and we're getting better, okay? And we will put up runs. It, it, I call it a get-it-done offense, okay? Uh, I, I'm really not concerned about numbers. I'm concerned about today and finding a way to win today. And so uh, that will continue to get better. Uh, but I'm going to need some guys to get healthy. And we need – look, we need, also need some guys to step up too. And they're more than capable of that. I think Lee made a big like – I was telling you this morning. Uh, you know, Lee's made a big enough push that if if it's me and and I've been there and I've done it, you got to think about walking Debo right there. I know it's tough. But, see, Lee's made a big enough push, and he obviously did throughout the weekend that, that that's, that's not something that they wanted to do. And so I'm I'm happy with his progress. We need to play more aggressively. Uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to keep getting better. Can you talk a little bit about the Torres catch and the throw out? Oh, man. You rolled your R's there. I was having trouble with the uh, – I like that. I like that. I like that. Torres. Well, we call him Cheo. Uh, so that's after Cheo Cruz. Uh, anytime I have a Jose, we, he's Cheo, period. Well, he's Cheo. He made two of the best plays I've ever seen a catcher make on the weekend. I don't know if anybody saw his play on Friday night, but it's arguably – it's more instinctive than the play yesterday. So they go – I think it's first and third. They go safety, squeeze, but they only get the ball from like me to the end of the stage. Torres, he runs out. And he's looking at the runner at third running while he and he grabs that and dives back at the same time and tags him out. And then the play yesterday, aided obviously by, you know, some iffy base running, but to lay out and he didn't just catch it. It was like it was like the 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 catch in the what was it, the 07 Super Bowl with the Giants where Yeah. Uh so he, he gets it. Everybody's congratulating him. And then everybody's like, oh, no, he's off second. So he throws from it. It was unbelievable. He just brings a certain – he's contagious. And I can tell he's a fan favorite and he's going to be wherever he's at. And uh, his last at bat there, he got a little testy, but that's him, man. He hits mad. You got to hit mad, though. You have to. They're trying to take your lunch money. And uh, Torres don't like that. Arkansas State's pretty challenging. And that's good. That's good. You want every team in the league to be doing great. And uh, to do what you want to do, you got to roll through all of them. And, uh, you know, at least give yourself a chance. And uh, every team in this league is good, and a lot of it depends on where you catch them and when you catch them. So uh, we're going to play those guys with a, a clean slate on the road, which Jonesboro is obviously – a uh, very difficult place to play. Uh, and so I expect us to have our hands full all weekend. And I'm happy for those guys. And Tommy does a great job. And, uh, you know, he might not have a lot of the luxuries a lot of us have. And uh, he's a, a baseball guy through and through that's been doing it for a long time. And so I'm happy for him.